Tonight, I'm gonna to show you my designs for 10 different French cleat tool holders. I recently finished my French cleat tool wall, which meant I needed to build some tool holders to put on it. So let me show you what I've built so far. First up is the classic chisel rack. This was made with a half inch piece of plywood as the back. For this front piece, I used Baltic birch. I wanted to size the holes so my chisel would actually sit down in the hole and not fall out of it. So this way I can put it in, it stays in place, and I can lift it out when I'm ready to use it. I also wanted to have a guard along the bottom to protect the sharp chisel points from getting bumped or hit. If I reach up and grab something on the wall, I don't want to hit my hand into the sharp points of the chisels. This guard though doesn't have a bottom because I didn't want it to collect with dust there. So it's just open so whatever dust is there falls right through. Next up is the mallet holder which is always close to the chisel rack. I didn't actually film the build on this one because it's basically just two boards screwed together. I did do the same thing to this hole. I chamfered out this inside edge so that when I put my mallet in it, it'll sit in it and it can't fall out. You'll notice that most of my tool holders are just made out of scrap plywood that I had around. That's because I realized very quickly that if I spend a lot of time trying to find the perfect gorgeous piece of wood to have on the background of this, I'm gonna spend way longer building this than I need to. I just wanna build something that's functional and that looks decent. Now this one does have a locking mechanism on it because if you pull up too hard or you twist it, you could pull the whole tool rack off. So I take this and I put this on the wall and then I have this sliding key that fits behind it. So that just goes right up above on the back and locks it in place and it's not going anywhere. So I can throw my mallet up there and I'm good to go. Now we're moving on to the glue rack. This is a quick and easy place to store all of my glues. I have my wood glues up on top and down below I have my CA glues. I really like using Starbond for my CA glue because they have a wide variety of products. I've never had any issues with them not curing or not working the way they should and they've lasted a long time. They also have all these fancy little tips that they come with that helps when you need to put the CA glue just in a tiny little hole on a project and you don't want to get it all over everything. As you can see this has two shelves and then a guardrail around the front. I really wanted to see how well the CA glue would perform gluing together something that is non-structural but still needs to be solid. So these rails going across were just glued in place there. There's a couple pin nails in the back to hold them to the side. But other than that, it's just CA glue holding it up. I also realized that I wanted my glue brushes in the same location, so I added a little box for those that's attached to the side of the shelf. For small stuff where you're not holding a ton of weight, I think the CA glue works really well. This rack does not have a locking feature because there's so much weight on it and the stuff that I'm pulling out of it is pretty small, so I'm not concerned about it getting knocked off. This next tool holder has some hidden secrets that make it super cool. I wanted a way to store my saws so the handle is down, but they're secure enough to not get knocked off the wall if I spray an air hose at it. This design uses gravity and friction to hold the saws in place until you want to release them. So to put one in, you just go up like this. When you have it where you want it, you just let go. It stays right there. And when you're ready to take it out, you pull up on it and you're good to go. Let me show you how this works. I made a little example here of the mechanism that's inside this. It's pretty simple, there's a little floating dowel here and you have this piece here that has an angle on it. And the point of this is as you take your saw and you put it in, that dowel slides up and when you pull the saw down, the dowel slides down and it holds it right there. This one is narrower, it was my proof of concept, but it still holds the saw. I started by cutting some quarter inch plywood as the backer. I then glued two pieces of three quarter inch plywood together and cut that into wedges with an 18 degree angle on one side. These were glued in place on the backer board. I then cut out some square pieces of quarter inch ply and glued them to the front. This keeps the locking dowel in place. Now you have to make sure that you leave the gap in there to put your saw blades in. Each of the dowels was cut and sanded to fit almost exactly to the length of the slot, but loose enough to be able to still roll. Once I checked it to make sure everything worked, I glued the top pieces on very carefully so I didn't get glue on the dowels. This tool holder definitely needed a locking mechanism because I'm pushing up on the holder to take the saws out. So what I did was basically drill two holes in the corner and you slide a dowel in there you slide a dowel in here, and all that does is it locks it on the cleat so it can't come off until you pull those dowels out. This tool holder up in the corner is basically a simple place to hang my level and my carpenter square. 
The purpose of this was to make sure the carpenter square and the level stayed out of the way but were accessible to me and they didn't blow around or fall off when I blew air at it again. It's literally a piece of plywood with a couple other pieces of plywood glued on and a dowel stuck in it. In order to make sure the carpenter square didn't fall off, I actually cut a groove in the back of this along two sides. That way my square sits in there and can't accidentally swing off if it gets off balance. The level is hanging on this dowel, which is angled up again so that it can't just fall off. Next up is my paper towel and tape dispenser. I wanted this to be heavier than just a single paper towel holder, so I added two of these on here and I also wanted it to be able to easily be changed. So I can switch out the towels whenever I want. I can take the tape off the rack when I want. I cut out the side shapes and drilled the hole for the dowel in the inside pieces. After sanding those smooth, I glued the two side pieces together with more star bond and then sanded them again. These side blocks were then screwed to the backer board. The dowel sit in the slots and can be easily removed if needed. The next tool holder is an organizer for all my sandpaper discs. To make this one, I made a basic plywood box and then cut a rabbit in either end for the corner joints. I then cut thin dados for shelves in each side with two passes on the table saw. The shelves were cut from some scraps of quarter inch ply with a rounded notch for a finger to easily grab each sanding disc. I routed a groove along the back inside edge and recessed a quarter inch backer board inside this groove to close out the box. Finally, after attaching the cleat, I printed some labels for each grit and then loaded it up. Now a quick and easy one for my snappy countersink drill bit set. This one is literally two boards screwed together at a 90 degree angle with a few strategically placed holes. I put some labels on it so I know which size is which and I also put some extra holes in for the depth stop and other accessories that it comes with. I didn't put a locking feature on this one because I find that when I'm just taking out small things like that, it's very unlikely that I'll knock it off. Now for a hammer rack. I have a decent variety of hammer shapes and sizes, so I decided to keep it simple by putting them all on the same rack. Although I didn't put my small sledgehammer on here. This was made by gluing two large dowels into two side pieces, which was then attached to the back. It's important to test the spacing of the dowels for your hammer collection so none of them slip through or hit the back. Finally, my hand plane till was the only one that I tried to make look a little bit nicer because it feels bad to put hand planes on something that doesn't look at least decent. So I got a big piece of Baltic birch and cut down some strips of cherry to be the dividers and edges. At the bottom, I decided to add some mini cleats to hold the bottom of each hand plane in place. These are customized to each plane, but they're screwed in place so that if I change things or if I upgrade, if I switch the order of any of these, I can always replace the cleats. This whole hand plane organizer needed to sit at a 20 degree angle out from the wall, so I cut two triangular pieces with a 20 degree angle on one side. I screwed these to some cross pieces and then drilled holes in the back for locking pins since this is one I wanted to be sure didn't move accidentally. All right, that's my first 10 French cleat tool holders. I'm sure I'll make more in the future, but I've enjoyed using these. They're fun little projects to do in an hour or two to see what kind of creative designs you can come up with. Now you may have noticed this shirt that I'm wearing, and I feel like some days this shirt just says it all. If you wanna pick up one of these sweet shirts, or any of my other merch, check out the links below. I hope that you got some more ideas for French cleat tool holders and you feel inspired to go out and make some. I'm sure I'll make more videos as I build more of these French cleat tool holders, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Now, go build something and we'll see you next time.